are going to jump into probably one of the most important subjects that we have in life and in Judaism and the Torah, and that is bitachon, that is having trust, cultivating trust, a deeper level of trust. And the reason why we're talking about bitachon specifically this week, the truth is we should be speaking about it all the time, and we do think about it and we need it all the time. But this week we have a Parsha that we're reading, Parsha Behar. And in this Parsha Behar, the Parsha starts off. So we're just going to read a little bit of the of the Psukim. Hashem and Moshe Behar Sinai Lemor. And Hashem spoke to Moshe on Har Sinai saying, It shall be when you will come into the land. Then the land should make a Sabbath, a Shabbat, for the land and the 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 psukim continue and we're just going to go we'll go a little bit into it but the question which is asked right away by the commentaries by the by rashi by the ramban basically is why does the torah start start off saying by dabar hashem behar sinai and mount sinai saying everything was said on mount sinai so why does it say by dabar hashem el moshe behar sinai on Mount Sinai saying, and then it gives us the mitzvah of Shemitah. Everything was, was said on, on Har Sinai, right? So why specifically here is it such a an important subject, you could say? So Rashi explains, asks the question, basically answers it. Shemitah etzel Har Sinai. What is the correlation of the sabbatical of Shemitah and Har Sinai? mitzvot nemu misinai. Elama Shemitah nemu misinai. Just like Shemitah we have all of the generalities, all the general rules and the specifics which are said perhaps more than other other mitzvot that we learn. They were said on Har Sinai. So too, all of the mitzvot were said that way. They were given, although we may not see all the details there, we learn it from what we call the Torah Shabbat Peh, the oral Torah. But we should know that all the details were given. They were just maybe extrapolated. They were They were understood uh, by the Chazal in their detail form. But the truth is that they're all they were all given in the generalities and the details. So this is this is what Rashi says, yeah? And the Ramban and many of the commentaries. Yeah, it's just pretty straightforward and, and clear so far. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in. So Hasidus basically opens up this this Rashi and this question. And basically says, what's going on here on a deeper level? Why specifically Shemitah? Why is Shemitah the mitzvah that we learn the generalities and the details? And that was said on Har Sinai. So too, all the mitzvahs were given on Har Sinai. What's so important about Shemitah? What is it about the sabbatical year, which is such a important generality that we have for everything, for all the other mitzvot, basically? So that's that's the question in which, which Hasidus uh, asks and entertains. And so the answer is basically, we're going to go into the answer in greater depth, but the answer is gener- is is like this. There are two parts in a person's life. There's the part that they do what we call the work. We go into the we go into the hishtadlut, we go into what we do, right? Sort of like what we do during the six, like what we do during the six days of the week, right? Where we um, go ahead and we do our job, right? We do the best that we can. And then the seventh, <clears throat> welcome. And then the seventh day is is the day that we let go. These two dynamics of putting in what we call our hishtadlus, our work, the best type of, you know, the best way to put in, and then to let go is basically the back and forth of life. And in order to do this properly, one has to go into a deeper, what we call kuchos nefesh, deeper powers of the soul, inner powers of the soul. Why? Because these two dynamics are at the center and at the core of our humanity, of who we are as 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 as, a, as humans, where we we feel like we have control, 
And God has made us, put us in that place that God is like, well, I want you to feel like you have control. And you do, you have the Bechira, you have the choice to choose all the time. And that's basically what we do. But to also know that you don't have the full control. You have to let it go to have a higher power. You let it go. That letting go to a higher power is the mitzvah of Shemitah. That the generalities and the, that, the, that the specifics and the generalities are basically the idea of the, the, the details that we have in life. And then the letting go is this generality that we know that everything really is left over to a higher power, to Hashem, right? Hashem is really the one that's running running the world. Even the smartest people, either even the most you know most successful everyone, business person, or doctors like Halavai, like doctors it says that that's why doctors, the best of the doctors, goes to says mm-hmm. Ganon to Purgatory because they think like many many doctors think like oh it's me like I'm giving the medicine, I'm doing the job, and right the truth is that. It's it's Hashem. It's Hashem that does that. Every, that that takes care of all healing. He t- he's the one that gives us all the success. He's the one that is at the end of the day behind everything that we do, and in 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 the beginning and in the end, and and we go through this process of of putting in a, our work. Okay, this work is basically at the most difficult work. And that's the work of of the balance of life, essentially. And that's why this mitzvah was was stands out as being this is this stands out as something which is extraordinary. And it was said on Har Sinai. Now why is it, why again Said on Har Sinai because it's like a generality for all of the mitzvot, for all of life, right? The back and forth of life, the back and forth of the of the mitzvah that we go and we do, but then we let go. We allow the godly divine light that comes that comes down in, into into our lives. It's the back and forth of Har Sinai, but on a deeper level, Vaydaber Hashem El Moshe Behar Sinai. Har Sinai represents the very mountain of of Sinai represents this contradiction. On the one hand, the Torah was given on a mountain, but on the other hand, it's not supposed to be a very high mountain, a haughty mountain, right? Like the Gemara says in Sech Shabbos, it says that all the mountains got together, right? Everyone knows this Midrash, and they were it's a Midrash. We want the, the Torah to be given on us, right? So Har Tavor, right? They all came together, Carmel, they, and no, it was it was this quiet. Like mountain Har Sinai is the one that gets to to be given on. And the question that's asked: So, why why Har Sinai? Because Har Sinai is humble, right? So, the question that's asked: Why not, why wasn't the Torah given in a valley? If that's the case, if you're looking for humility, why give it at all on a mountain? Give it in a valley. And the answer is that no. It's supposed to be given on a mountain. And mountain represents what we call a tokif, to have a certain um, forefront um, strength that we that we that we do that we carry forth. We know that we have that we're bringing forth a certain power with what we're doing, right? And that's the idea of a mountain. A mountain represents an elevated state. There's an elevated state, like it says that a person shouldn't have gaiva, shouldn't have uh, haughtiness. But they should have a certain level of haughtiness. It says an eighth of an eighth of, of haughtiness. What does that mean? That a person should have a little of this feeling of that that yes, I mean something. I do something when I when when I do a, a mitzvah or when I when when I'm when I ha- have a shtadlut that I'm trying to do something, then it's it's meaningful, right? And I shouldn't think of myself. Oh, what am I doing? Who am I? What is this? No, a person should have a, a, a level of that says that in the book of Shmuel, that 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 heart was was like rose in 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 right in in the ways of Hashem. So the Mount Sinai is a mountain, but on the other hand, it's a humble mountain, and it represents these opposites, these two dimensions: the dimension of 
the what we've put forward and then recognizing it's not how tall the mountain is or how hard I try to have everything in control, right? It's putting in the effort, but then realizing it's the humility that's that that is the one that's that's carrying forth, that the one that's that's really it's it's Hashem, right? So these two opposites are in the actual Har Sinai itself, right? So just like Shemitah, Shemitah represents the contradiction of putting in the details, but then the letting go of Shabbat, like sort of like we do during the week, we do six days, and then on Shabbat, we let go, all of your job is done. So too, on a, on a, on a personal level, we put forth the effort, but then, right, we, we, we let go. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah, definitely is. A hundred percent. That's the that's the letting go of hod. So the, the going forward is netzach, where we have a fortitude that we take, we go forward, but you can't just hop on one foot, on your right foot, right? Because then you're just going forward and forward and forward and forward. You have to go back and that's the level of humility. For some people, Having the fortitude is a lot easier than to have to have the hod, the humility. For others, to have the humility is easier, but to have the fortitude is harder. But that's where these two these two aspects really come come into into play, and that's what we work on. Um, Avigali wrote uh, certainty. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's certainty is. I'm not sure what what exactly you mean by that. Is that what you're describing? That if you have like a conviction, a, a certainty, like you know that you're supposed to do ah, this. Right. At, like with certainty, not like, mm, I don't know, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Is, is that, so is that a good word for it? And yeah, what yeah. Is, Have, having the fortitude for that, the certainty. And you could say the self-confidence as well. Like mm -hmm. Hashem, God wants us to have self-confidence. It's not like, oh, what am I? Who am I? And I'm going to just do this. No, God wants us to have the certainty, but then to also have the ability to just let go. Okay. So let's, let's delve a little bit deeper into this, into, into the, the, the mitzvah of Shemitah. So according to many of the commentaries, right, the, Basically, the Maral, the the Kliyakar, the Sfas Emes, like all of the major commentaries come along and they basically say that this mitzvah was given to us by Hashem so that we shall, we should understand that we need to welcome, that we need to understand that we need to let go and have bitachon in Hashem. That that's why this mitzvah was given to us. So this is like the only time that the Torah even like predicts. I mean, at least in this way, predicts a rationale, a human rationale that asks the question of what will happen. And 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 the and the verse says like this. So. Um, and if you shall say, what will we eat on the seventh year? So again, so the sixth year, you're you're getting ready for the seventh year. The seventh year is the Shemitah year, right? And then you're not doing any work on the on the seventh year. So what exactly, right? So God says, I will command my blessing for you on the sixth year that it will produce the, pro the produce for three, for three years, basically for six, seven, and eight years. And this is like a known thing, like farmers who keep the Shemitah in the land of Israel, 
they have an unbelievable like blessing that 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 happens like it, something which is above nature but the question is like the chitomru like the torah is asking what what we what the farmer is probably going to ask what will you what will we eat and it's a good question because here you are you've got a family here you are but it's not just like okay i could i could skip a meal myself or something like that right it's not like in the it's not like supermarket uh uh times you know it's uh it's basically this person has a responsibility as 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 a as a as a caregiver or a parent whatever it is you're like what's going to be and it's not just for for one year even which is a lot it's for it's it's a bunch of years so what what will happen so the torah says i will command my blessing to you on the 6th and the, and etc and you will basically have an unbelievable amount of produce so there's a beautiful teaching from Rabbi Elimelech of Lezhensk, um, from the Noam Elimelech. Um, from the Noam Elimelech. We have you, what's that? You went there? We went oh, wow. There. It was amazing. It's a very holy place. It felt like in Israel. Like, I felt like in Israel. It was it, something. It's wow. Very holy place. Yeah, the Noam Elimelech. Yeah. So the Noam Elimelech brings in his book the only time that he quotes his brother. Does anyone know? Ah. No way. Ah, Valdek. Oh. So he quotes his brother, Abzusha. Okay? And this is what he says. He quotes th th this, this Pasuk and he brings the explanation. If you will ask the question, what will we eat on the seventh year? We didn't plant, we didn't harp, uh, um, uh, we didn't we didn't uh, uh, collect all of our pr produce. Vitzivite birchati. So Rabzusha says as follows: that the truth is that we're always enveloped by Hashem's goodness all the time, and if we would have the the right level of seeing that or recognizing that. And not having our own, basically, mind and thoughts and chatter and doubt to get involved in all things. If we would just know that and be like, hush it, of course, obviously. Like, like, no question, God's got my back. Like, it's it's good, right? 100%. Then there's nothing to talk about. It's going to be that, that way. There's, It's not, like, a person, if a person could live in that realm, not Metzius. And Rabbi Zusha was a tzaddik, a huge tzaddik, and Rabbi Malik was a huge tzaddik. So you could say, oh, that's talking about tzaddikim, but it's kind of in, in, the, in, in, in his teachings, it's basically saying that, throwing that out there as like a very, it's a high standard, basically, but it's an attainable standard for, for, for everyone to, to, to really attain. To, to understand that we're swimming, and like he doesn't say it in that words, but we're swimming in Hashem's hashgacha. Hashem is always watching over us all the time. Hashem is always watching over us. Hashem is always giving us exactly what we need. And if, if we say, oh, Hashem, I need something. And the stories of Reb Zusha, Reb Zusha would talk in third person and say, Zusha needs this. Zusha, all of a sudden, like there's stories, you know, that this would appear and that would appear. Zusha is hungry and the food would come, right? I learned from him. I did it in 770. It, Zusha wanted some bagel. It suddenly came bagel to the, to the it's, coffee place. See? I work like him. You see? When you do a lot of Torah, you can it's coming. Exactly. That the level of bitachon. We're, we're going to look a little bit more into, into the Shara bitachon from Rabbeinu Bechai. But so he explains it as follows. But if a person will have a question, and this is how he says this, if a per person will doubt, that level of doubt, listen, we all doubt. We all have like, you know, are grappling with bitachon and amuna questions all the time. But if we have that question and we're like, no, no one is watching over me. I don't know if it's going to work out. I don't know what's going to be, etc. right? All of that dialogue. 
וכי תאמרו מה נוחה בשן השביעי. וציוויתי את ברכתי then, רב זושה says, then השם will have to now create like a new pipeline, so to speak, because, you're, because the person's natural pipeline has been, you could say, um, uh, blemished. Dislodged. Dislodged. It, dislodged, right, thank you. Yeah, by, 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 by their lack of bitachon, lack of emunah. Right, they they kind of they kind of like said where where is it what what's going on they they they're not connected to that pipeline, so now v'tziviti berchati now Hashem needs to make a new pipeline. It's like a barrier. Say that again. Maybe like a barrier, kind of between. Yeah. What Hashem's going to give them? Yeah. Exactly. They clogged it. It's a barrier or got dislodged, whatever way you want to imagine it. I don't know how it works exactly, but the way the way it works basically is is that a person has a deep level of 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 feeling that Hashem is watching over them on a very, very deep level and knowing level. Like it's not like, oh, Hashem's watching over. That's emuna. That's that emuna is like that Hashem is. Is everywhere. Hashem is the creator of the world. Bitachon is that Hashem is doing good for me, mm-hmm. like like now. And Hashem is watching. Like bitachon, like of course it's going to be good. Of course Hashem is going to give me exactly what I need. Of course I shouldn't worry if you know someone is saying this and that. The other one, the other one. I don't like. They're not kovea. They're not in charge. Hashem is the one in charge. I have the bitachon that this is the truth. This is the emes, and and therefore. That's the thing. But when I doubt, I'm like, oh, well, this person said that. So then I have to look into that and I have to. St- uh, so then we kind of like alter our our pipelines. You know, the 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 plumbing has been altered. And you need like a, the plumbing, Hashem's plumber, right? Hashem's the plumber over here to like create new plumbing into us. So Hashem now has to like sort of like, okay. Well, this uh, this person is 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 in this in this level. How many? How am I going to get to them? Of course, Hashem can get to us all the time, but He wants to know that He's the one that's giving to us. And like when 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 we don't recognize that and we're full of fear and doubt, so Hashem is like, of course I'm going to take care of them. They're my children. I'm going to take care of them. No problem. But like, I wish that they could like look at me and be like. I know that that you're the one that's that that's giving to me all the time. So Hashem needs to create like new pipeline to make things to make things happen. This is the the vort the the of a Reb Zusha, like a very like a very powerful idea of understanding of how he takes it under how he understands bitachon how he understands the whole notion of Shmita, basically. Is that is that why? Like, I remember once hearing that probably that the like Hashem so to speak, the the one you believe in that like kind of he leaves you. So like you're like okay, this person's gonna help. Right. You. I'll leave. and maybe he does it because we're his children. He's like, it's almost like how am I gonna get to them? Because the most loving thing is for them to realize that I'm the source of everything. So mm-hmm. how am I going to open their eyes to right. see that it's me who's in control? So I'm going to leave them in the devices of this Russia that they thought they're going to, you know, has power. And this doctor they thought that's going to have the answer. And all of a sudden everything's falling apart. And it's like, hey, maybe they don't have the answer. And that's like a term. Um, it's like Hashem's way of like, kind of like, how am I going to create a new pipeline mm-hmm. so they finally recognize who who's truly the one in charge? Yeah. That's the most loving thing. And Very. also, I was thinking that I remember, like, I like I a true to, granddaughter of Rabzusha. I used to think Bitachon was just like I like it was like a feeling that I believe Hashem is here, but it never felt like that loving part. And then, like, I was singing like there's a song Lani Vachaz Dachavatachti. And all of a sudden, I realized, like, it clicked. It's it's so simple that really, 
bitachon equals that I believe in your chazdecha, and that's why it's like this is my loving father, and he loves me, and he and he has compassion, and he's guiding me, and and he's taking care of me just like a father. Like mm -hmm. it, it's it's like the opposite of bitachon to think Hashem is like oh he's in control, but you know what? I'll oh, be like like second best for me, or you know what? He doesn't care about my feelings or my or how it feels to me. No, he cares how it feels to me. He cares about how how I'm able to kind of feel his reality and feel his love and feel his taking feel taken care of. That's exactly it. that's 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 beautiful beautifully said. So um what's that? No, no, it's it's in the Nam Elimach. But um what remind me your name again? What Dvor Leo was saying, also a powerful name, um, that, how did you know? Thank you, Hashem. <laughs> See that? Just needed water, and it just came on time. Wow. Uh, so what Dvor Leo was saying, um, I, I think, touches upon the difference between emuna and bitachon, because emuna is not necessarily emuna the belief, not just that there is a God, that's not emuna because like, it's pretty obvious that there is a God. Like you don't need to be a genius to get right to see that. Um, right. Um, <laughs> not into, no, I, I, I think it's just a matter of like seeing properly and like, you don't have to see what, what, what people are, what people are doing is not the reality of what cre what creation, you know, God's creation is all about. You know what I'm saying? So comparing, like looking at people and saying, oh, they're all doing this. And therefore that means like, you know, if the world is governed this way is, is, is exactly, is exactly the job of, 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 of the Jewish people. You know, Avraham went against the stream. He was like a rebel with a cause. So the whole world was going that way. Avraham and Ivri, he went against the, the tide. He was like, they're all saying it's, it's, it's idolatry. They're all saying it's, you know, the world is created by this. And Avraham was like, no, it's hello. You guys like, are you guys mad? Are you guys, it's, there's a creator here, but anyways, the creator, um, sorry. And Muna, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a feeling per se. Like emuna is more like, like a like a, a it could be a dormant uh, uh, conviction that is in one's being. Right? It says in chapter eighteen of Tanya that you know that a simpleton, right, uh, of of the Jewish people will would would give up their life for Hashem. You know, even though they were doing averis, they were doing like negative things their entire their entire life, and um, because that comes out as the essence of who they are inside, because that's the essence of a Jew is the amuna that they have inside of them, right? But it's does, but in their day to day life, it may not come into into fruition, right? Whereas bitachon is the day to day. Bitachon is like what we what we grapple with basically in the most tangible way where we're worried, where we're anxious about this and we're anxious about that. And the other thing and bitachon, like it is, it, it truly is like the avoda, like the thing to work on. Right. The Torah says it's the only place again, that a person will ask, will, will doubt like what's going to be for three years. Hello, my family, like God, like, what do you expect from me? You're giving me a mitzvah that is, that's impossible. And the Torah is basically saying, like, it's it's about bitachon. It's about emuna that I'm I'm in control. It's about bitachon that you that you step out of the limitations of the confines of what you think is possible, because what you think is possible is very is very flawed and, um, you know, just filled with 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 self doubt that that doesn't that doesn't always come from us right it comes a lot from people that we see in our environment and ways that we grew up and so to step into bitachon is a huge is 
is, is a huge step forward, right? So I'd like to just go a little bit into this book, one of the most important books to really have, Shara Bitachon, um, from the Rabbeinu Bechaye, who lived in the 13th century in Spain. There's a, there are two, there's no, there's, they say that he's buried here in Tzfat, um, in the, in the old seminary. I, I don't know. I happen to be a Cohen, so I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. That's not sure. There's another opinion that he's next to Habakkuk, which, which is, but yeah. So anyways, Rabbeinu Bechai wrote um, a, a philosophical book called Chovas Alevavos, and and one of the of the important chapters from that book is is a chapter or number of chapters. Actually, there there are nine chapters. Uh, sorry, seven chapters that are all about bitachon, and it's one of the most important things to really, you know, just jump into, get into a little bit, like to learn it. There's actually an Indian, there's actually a thing to learn it, like a, even a little bit of it almost every day. And that strengthens a person's bitachon. So the I, I'd like to just like quote like a number of, um, a number of ideas that are found throughout. So I'd like to quote something from the first chapter, the third chapter, and then um, the sixth Sorry, fifth chapter. Okay, so the first chapter, he explains what is the essence of bitachon. So this is what he says, and he basically terms it. So he says, uh, and I'll translate it into English, that the aspect of bitachon is the menuchat nefesh, is the tranquility of the soul of the one who has bitachon. In other words, like, I'm not doubting. Like, Almost like what, what Rab Zusha was saying. It's like we're in just you're enveloped in your father's love, right? You're enveloped in like being guarded. So the, there's the menucha tanefish. Vishali bo samuch al mi shebatachalav shiase ato ve anachonlo ve ini nashayif tachalav. And and the person should should be completely uh, certain in the goodness of the one that. You, that you have bitachon with, right? So basically saying that the main thing is to realize that that it's all in the hands of Hashem, and that the and that and that everything good that is yet to happen is going to happen, even though you're not sure how it's going to happen, because you're like, how's this supposed to come into fruition? I, like this doesn't, it's, it doesn't make sense. How am I supposed to, how's this supposed to work out? That's supposed to work out, which we, in every step of life, we're always like, well, okay, you showed me last step that it worked out, but who says it's going to work out the next time? And we have this question all the time. We're like, in every step of life, we're like, well, maybe now we're not, it's not going to turn, turn it's not going to work out. Maybe and and you're like, oh, it did work out. Wow, thank you, Hashem. Thank God. Okay, now I'm on my own. And then you're like, oh God, I need you. Where you know, please help me through to the next stage. And and again, with Sivitzis Berchatsi, we're like, we make the rewiring. Okay, now I'm gonna have bitachon. And then like we fall off the train again. And and the the, the shar bitachon basically tells us, listen, real bitachon is is recognizing that everything, everything is in in life comes from this source and in the second chapter he explains that the whole idea of bitachon is recognizing that someone that you could truly trust someone that has your back is someone that has been with you forever that knows you that has the power to do so it goes through seven seven um to nine seven uh um 
laws basically and he says who's the only one that 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 could fulfill all of these tonight and that that that's the creator essentially that's hashem so you're thinking you should the human being forced to one of them you cannot trust someone to do all the same things exactly and in Which, to it, marry someone like this but uh, to marry with <laughs> One that can fulfill everything, but it's not like it's, it's all like, on you can it? believe in him, you can trust him, you can re rely on him, you and ta all what you said. No human being, you can do all this. On so, in chapter five, he... no, no, even on me, no, Zusha wants that as well. <laughs> <laughs> In chapter five, he says that it's true. in life, we grow up and we basically trust people that give us something. And we're like, this person is giving me something. I trust them because they're giving me. And he starts off with explaining when we were babies. So who took care of us, right? Our, our, our mother, right? Nurse, nursed us, took care of us, etc. So we're like, oh, comes from our mother. And we grew up a little bit and we're like, well, okay, this may sound a little, you know, mass, uh, chauvinist, but it's like, fine. At least it, at least it was this way in Chovas in, uh, in, um This is the 1300s. And he's like, well, it's my father. Right now, you have to watch out exactly what you're saying. Oh my God, no, you said that. You know, that means the women are, 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 don't go to the work. It's like, so then um, you, re, you, 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 thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't going to listen. Listen, I, I am I'm keeping things. You guys didn't think that, that these discussions enter, entered spot, right? Anyways. So, uh oh, so. Then the, the child grows up and he's like, it's my dad. He's taking care of me. Mm -hmm. And then and then he goes to an apprentice and he starts to learn how to make things, how to how to work or whatever. And he's like, well, it's my uh, abilities. And he's like, well, then it's it's the person who's paying me. It's my boss. So my boss is paying me my 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 paycheck. So it's coming from from them. And he quotes this this person who, who had a who was a beautiful like artist scribe. And he said, he said, oh, God forbid, if who knows what will happen if if I if if something will happen to my uh abilities. And and he says, well, the next day something did happen. And he was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Because he trusted that it was his hands that 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 were the source of his parnasa. Like it was like even his job, his schooling, you could say. Like I went to this school, or I um I landed a job here. So then that's the source of my of my income. And the truth is, no, like everything is him. And at all stages of life, it really is all coming from, from this source. And and until basically until until we stop getting sidetracked by all of these by all of these things, right? Then we could really have true bitachon in, in, in Hashem. It's being sidetracked by thinking it's it's this, it's that, it's that ability. If Hashem wants, then you know you will meet the right person, and if you know the right shidduch, the right the right connection, and who knows, you know you'll 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 get into a partnership. And the yeah, so there's a story with with the holy Al Sheikh that lived over here in Tzfat, uh, Reb Moshe Al Sheikh, that he was uh, he was teaching his students here in the old city of of Tzfat, and and he was teaching them about the power of trust, the power of bitachon, because he saw that they were whatever whatever it was on their level, they they had a certain you know they need to be strengthened by it. Well, there was a simple person that was in that was there that was listening, and he was there at the shear at the at the class. And the simple person was was listening to what the rabbi was saying. He was saying, the rabbi was saying, if a person really had trust in Hashem, Hashem would would take care of them a hundred percent without 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 a doubt. They had 
really full trust like like that. So this guy goes home and he tells his wife, wife, you know, we are selling our um our horse or you know which you know which which was the source of their livelihood because he did like he did like kind of like um uh doing rides whatever like all types of uh he was a whatever fedex whatever it was on and so he he sold it and uh he took the money and his wife was like what are we gonna do he's like i i know that it's gonna be good and he had this bitachon and he basically goes and he starts learning and he learns a month goes by two months goes by and they're like using up all their money and his wife is like okay like what is this what what is this guy thinking how are you or not what is this guy thinking you know and he keeps up uh, and and he's like i have full trust it's going to be good it's going to be good so this is the story 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 of the al sheikh it, it sounds like a hasidic story but like it's a it's a story from the al sheikh so all of a sudden uh the horse comes back to uh to the uh to the to this man's house and carries the uh you know carries, carries the 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 wagon that's in the back and on it is is like a like a big chest like a big sort of like a you know box of something and and the wife is like, "Wow, you never, you never guess what happened. We just got back our, our the horse just came back here. Like I don't, I thought you sold it. And there's a there's a box on it. So they open up the box and you see there's a there's like a whole treasure there. Yay. So what happened was that this guy who they sold it to was uh, wherever he was doing business or whatever he was doing, he passed and he put he had his treasure there and uh the, the the horse just knew how to get back to the guy's house the guy didn't have anyone to collect to to and and basically this guy became like um the millionaire of of Tzfat, right overnight right he became he, beca he, beca he became he became he became like the the gavir and uh his students, the students of the of the Al Sheikh, were like, were like, Rabbi, like we also had bitachon, like we also were doing the right things. But it's like, no, you guys didn't fully have bitachon. You learned about bitachon. You didn't put it through the truth to the heart. Exactly. Exactly. Adam Pashut, he take it from here, put it here, put it in the mindset, go. And that's it. And he had that's the full bitachon. He had the full bitachon, exactly. He had the full bitachon of like, Hashem is taking care of me. And he was just 100% fully, fully trust, trust, trusted in, in Hashem on that level. And um, the reciprocation, right, it's of that, of that, of that came back. He went to learn. So the more you add Torah into yourself, the more you add miracle into your life. Yeah. Because you're bringing that to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that helps with the bitachon, right? Because yeah. you're learning and you're bringing it into your life. It's not just theoretical. You're also bringing it into your, into your body, into into who you are. Especially when you learn about Malchut, you're learning about the Shem Kedoshiyah stuff in your head. The Malchut, what do you mean? It's the last parashat shavua, the last talks, the last year talks oh, of the week parashat from the Rebbe. So full of kedusha. So okay, so I I wanna. Kind of like in 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 our last uh, ten minutes or so, to kind of put put things together with uh, the jubilee with a yovel. So we talked about shemitah. Shemitah is the letting go. It's the idea of there's a time in the in in the in the in the six year process that we let go. We work on bitachon, right? Shabbat has this level of bitachon as well. But what is the yovel? What is the jubilee? year about right it, the yovel the jubilee year is the 50th year right we have 49 right seven times seven and then we have the 50th year which is basically on the seventh shmita we we don't do anything and then on the 50th we also don't do anything it's basically four years essentially of like not not doing stuff 
Yeah, because it's the sixth year you finish doing, and then you start eating on the seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine right? And Essentially, then the years you don't do nothing, and then the fifty-one year you don't do nothing. It's four years, right? Wow. So the level of the jubilee of the of the yovel is an even higher level. It's like the shemitah, like on steroids, right? Accelerated. What is what is what is the yovel? Yovel is that everything goes back to its original owner. Everything goes back to its original state. So all the slaves go free. And the land goes back to its in, to its original inheritance. So everything that's sold from, let's say, one uh, bit, um, tribal land, someone from another tribal land buys it. They only have until the fiftieth year, and then it goes back to its original state. It's a good deal to buy There's the house. The well, the Torah speaks about the, that. So the, the Torah speaks about loto nu ishetamito. You shouldn't. You shouldn't do onat. Mammon, no, 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 not mammon is 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 basically cheating, like giving someone a good deal, and you can't just right. So the Torah speaks about this specifically about about that. But kabbalistically, the I what is the difference between shmita and yovel? Okay, so the Arizal explains that shmita has to do with what we call kabbalas all, and the acceptance of the yoke of Hashem. And in, in Chassidut, it's called Bittol Hayesh, the nullification of the self, of the ego, where a person is like, I don't get it. And we struggle with Bitachon, right? So that's called Kabbalah Sol, where we, where we accept, okay, I'm just giving up my need to have control. But like deep down, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty anxious. But you know what? At least I've gone through the steps of of having the bitachon externally, right? Which is a high level. So Shemitah really is that level that the Arizal says. But what is Yovel? Yovel is Jubilee. That's the level of, the Arizal says, the level of Bina. It's the level of divine intuition. And it's the higher level of uh, what we call Bittol B'Metzius. There's a nullification in totality. Now there's an interesting idea that um that the Torah speaks about basically there's three stages in the land of Israel regarding the Shemitah right and Yovel periods so the first level was the level of when all of the 12 tribes 13 tribes were on the land so it's called Kol Yoshvea Alea, that that the, that all of the inhabitants of the land were on the land. And at that point, the Jubilee year existed. So there were seven years, and then time another seven times seven, and then the 50th, and then it would start another cycle again, right? And it says that um, we went into exile for 70 years because we did not keep 70 shmitas properly that's what there was there was the um the punishment for that which the kliyakar explains that a person thinks that i will it's my power that i'm in control so and it's not god in control so god is like okay you think you're in control let's see what happens let's see how it works out so that's the whole idea of exile, which is mida keneged mida. It's like level for level. But anyways, that's the first part of the Shemitah and Yovel Jubilee cycle. And then when the first tribes were exiled, who, who was first exiled? Right, but, but the first ones that were exiled were Reuven, Reuven and God from the Transjordan, from the, from the, you know, the side of the... No, no, and then later on, the rest of them, Reuven and God were the first ones that the Assyrian king came, right? That Tiglath Pileser, and then no, 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 that was did, but I'm saying it first started off with with Reuven and God. So at that point, yeah, in the in the in the in the first temple era, now not all of the not everyone was on the land. So now it turns out that Shemitah has a different level of, of 
of strength. Because when we ha you have the Yovel, you have the Shemitah. So then the Yovel and the Shemitah go hand in hand. The Arizal says they're basically the a letter, first letter He of God's name, and then the last letter of Hashem's name. And they're basically, the two of them go hand in hand. But when there's, when the people are not on the land, so then Shemitah has a different gedder, has a different halachic level. And they're not getting into the details of it, but it's a... Um, Machokis, it's a uh, um, argument between the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, whether or not, even though the even though um, everyone was not on the land, is Shemitah is still a mitzvah from the Torah or not? So, according to the Babylonian Talmud, it is not. It's called rabbinic, which is how basically. Most posting, most uh, halachic uh, opinions are for nowadays that Shemitah nowadays is Izmid Rabbanan, but according to the Yerushalmi, according to that, it is actually still Midar Aisa. And so that's so that's the second level of the so relationship between Yerushalmi because we do Shemitah. No, 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 but is it is it rabbinic? It's is it rabbinic or or is it from the Torah? That's that's basically the um, two opinions. It's it, it is written in the Torah, but uh, but I'm trying to to explain that it's contingent on all of the it, the verse says that we keep shemitah when we're on the land, and the and the, oh. the, the 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 Talmud says that what does it mean on the land? All of the tribes must be on the land in order to to properly. So, whatever you say, celebrate, or or to really, you know, have this relationship of shemitah, right? And we don't know which tribes we are from. No, no, no. Oh. but we know that all the tribes are not on the land. That's the point. Oh, we know so, that for sure. Yeah, so yeah. for sure, it's 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 rabbinic. Like without yovel, you're kind of like the essence of shemitah leaves off the yovel. So then you right. Yovel, you can't get to this in a certain sense, like. According to that, it's like it's also like something lacking in the shemitah itself. Exactly, which I'm gonna I'm gonna speak. Uh, yeah, that's that's the point I I want to get to that that relationship. But first, like understanding the the third level is that when we don't have any reason to count the yovel at all. In other words, after after the rest of the ten tribes were were exiled, so then there's a reason to just count the forty nine, right? To just know at least the jubilee cycle. That so there was just an idea about that. It's not so much about keeping the jubilee, but it's a, at least having a recollect recollection of the cycle period that there is a cycle. So that happened um, up until the actual destruction of 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 the temple, and then and then after that, we don't even count for understanding the Jubilee year. The the Maimonides, the Rambam says, we don't even know exactly when the Jubilee is. and But we do know that there, we do still count the, the Shemitah. So there's three levels. There's a level of Yovel on the highest level. There's the level of Yovel just to know the cycle of Shemitah. And then there's the Shemitah without any of the Yovel. So there's a beautiful explanation given by, by the Rebbe on this understanding the relationship between these dynamics. And so the first level, so basically understanding that Jubilee represents what we call Bittol B'Mitzius. And Bittol B'Mitzius is a nullification in totality and understanding like having a feeling for what for what it is that we're doing. And that's the idea of, of the Jubilee year. The Jubilee year was like a place that we went back to in our consciousness that we felt in line and in sync with the master of the world. Like all slaves are freed. Everything goes back to its place. We, we There's a reset button that happens. Like we just, we're, we're just like, we're transported back to the way things were intended to be, right? Whereas Shemitah is, we, we just control ourselves not to, not to do the work, let's say, on, on the field. And that's called bitol hayesh. That's called the nullification of the ego, of the self. Now, when the two of them were in line, there's a beautiful, what we call union between the two. Because when you restrain yourself from doing something and you don't understand, what am I even doing this for, right? Anyone ever had like this question? Of course. Like, why am I not 
allowed to do this? Or why do I not do that? And, and if you don't necessarily understand the answers per se, it's harder, it's harder to, to really have your heart in it. Whereas the union, or you could say the yichud of these two levels of Bina and Malchus, the level of Jubilee and Malchus, right? And Shemitah coming together, it was a beautiful union. But that was the time of the temple where all, all the inhabitants were on it. But what happened during exile? So then we have what we what we call the Jubilee level is is celebrate is is not really celebrated anymore. And but we still have a recollection of the Jubilee dimension. And that's like the level of we're on on the level of Shemitah and we're controlling ourselves, but we are still understanding that there's something up over here and there's something that I could tap into by not doing whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing, even though I don't fully grasp it. I'm not fully, you know, in, in sync with it in on the highest level, but I still do get it. That's the second level. The third level is the time of exile. The time that we don't have the Jubilee that we're counting right about. And it's the time that we are in this, in, in a state of um, basically keeping the Shemitah. So now you could say that it's very external, that the keeping the Shemitah is an external action. And so it's what we call like, like Kabbalah's all, like a person just like doing something because, you know, there's, there's the, there's the restraining of, of oneself, of one's ego, of one's will to whatever it is, not to, uh, to do something, Right. So on this, there's a machokis, there's there's a um, dispute between the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud. According to the Babylonian Talmud, it's still considered, it's, it's considered rabbinic. It's considered on a lower level. In other words, that this level of keeping the Shemitah is on a lower level. And that we're almost like keeping it, but it's... But why are we why are we even keeping it? And what's what's the bigger exactly that? So according to the ba Babylonian Talmud, which is just doing the mindset, just a, and that's the idea of the Babylonian Talmud, which is the idea of the darkness, machshakim. Right, the Babylonian has to do with the darkness of exile, but the Jerusalem Talmud, which was written about a hundred, sorry, two hundred years earlier by Rabbi Yochanan of Yochanan in the land of Israel it was it was the first Talmud that was written according to according to the Jerusalem Talmud it is min it's 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 from the Torah to keep the Shemitah in other words that even though we're not keeping the Jubilee even though we're not on the level of having like the higher bitol b'mitzius at the same level the 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 what we do with our um with our Kabbalah soul, the, the, what we do with, with our self-sacrifice of key of, of having the bitachon has huge implications. And you, and, and it's something that has the ability to spearhead basically the entire system. And the way the Rebbe puts it, it's like the level of hod shabahod. It's the level of like Rebbe Shimon's day of Lagba Omer, where it's the level of like, it seems like it's so far and, and so like basic and so whatever, but at the same time, that that has a very very deep way of accessing a very important of a very important stage. So the bottom line is that we think that I'm putting in my bitachon, I'm putting in my shtalos, I'm putting in what I, what I can, even though I'm not fully feeling it. Because that's the jubilee year coming in. I'm like, why can't I feel like full bitachon? Or almost like that that simple guy with the story of the al Sheikh that was like, yeah, I feel it. Or I'm going in. So for most of us, it's not so simple. It's not so straightforward, right? But we shouldn't uh, put ourselves down for that. For having the you know the struggle. In the bitachon, and to, to, and again, again, Reb Zusha for him that was a very high level, and he was able to access it. Most of us are not able to 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 really live on that continuous level of bitachon, but just to also know that while we are.
trying to, to also know that we're human. And the fact that we're trying to has a very deep um, importance to everything. Yeah. A nullification in totality. So it means bit like that everything. So there's 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 two two levels of nullification. One nullification is that it's me nullifying my ego. Like in other words, like I want to say something to this person, right? And I'm gonna hold myself back. Or I want to eat the other this this piece of cake, this other extra piece of cake. Bitalayesh says, I'm gonna stop myself. I'm gonna restrain myself from doing something which I really want to do, basically. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. Whereas Bittel B'Mitzius is like, wow, I'm connected to such a, um, a lofty level of, of understanding. I'm in such a good place. Why would I want to scream at this person? Why would I want to, uh, I don't know, eat this extra bit of, of, of cake where I know I'm not going to feel good from it, like in a, in a minute from now, right? And I, I shouldn't delude myself that I, that I, that I, that it'll be okay just this one time. I know it's not going to be okay. So, anyways, that's that's basically the feeling, which 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 we could tap into. Bittol b'mitzios is like that 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 there's a spiritual source that is go- that that I'm connected to that is higher than just my ego than myself, and I'm tapping into that. So we were able to tap into that when the temple was around. The first temple where, where all the inhabitants were on the land. There was a very high revelation of godliness in the world. The first letter letter hey of, of, of God's holy name of Bina, right? Was was shining at that at that point. Um Jane, how are you? Good. I had a question for you. Yes. Yeah. So is the only physical manifestation of Shemitah in the diaspora is the practice of Bidahon? Or is there other physical manifestation of Shmita practice that we are required to to follow? It's you basically hit it on the on the head that that it is basically bitachon. Okay. That is that is the the you know we could say like the practical takeaway of 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 things. And and is there is there a you know is it, other than the the day to day bitahon is there is there a time component to the shemitah that has to do with other things other than um, other than the 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 growth cycle or or the the farming uh, elements of it in the diaspora? I mean, because it's only it only applies to the land of Israel, right? There's no, no application of it to outside of the diaspora. So there's no application to it uh, in non-farming and non, uh, non-land of Israel uh, environments. Right, exactly. Other than the home. Okay. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's the question. Um, Thank you. Sure. So Alyssa, you're um, a bit confused on how we lost count of the cycle of the Yovel. So very simple. We went into exile and, and, you know, during the first temple, we were out of the land for 70 years. The second temple, you know, during the second temple, when we were really exiled into Babylonia and, um, and, and the strains, right. The constraints of, you know, of, of exile became, you know, it just, uh, we lost, we lost, we lost track of it. Essentially, um, you could say, "Oh, there were a lot of smart people," but like again, like if we understand a little bit of, of Jewish history, we would, un- you know, we understand that it's it's been it's been a it's been a rough ride to say the least. Um, I don't know if that right does that does that make sense? Um, um sort of. I mean. Like I know a lot happened when we went into exile, but like, isn't it pretty clear? We just, we know the year that we were observing it and then we know the years that we left. So it's like, how did we lose count of the years? So the, the, it doesn't, yeah. the Maimonides basically says that if you, if you want to know that, that actually he says that, but he says at the same time, I can say this for certainty. So, so in other words, we don't know exactly when the Jew, there are, 
like we we have we have like a pretty close um prediction of when it could be but we can't say it with certainty and that's that's basically um the point okay. yeah yes. yeah <laughs> yeah he basically brings like a number of opinions of when it could be um in his in his in his writings uh so yeah but wouldn't that also apply to Schmidta? it right so Shmi it, it it did and and that's why the counting of Shemitah nowadays is right according to the Babylonian Talmud is is uh rabbinic because we lost because we lost track and I guess according to the Jerusalem Talmud we didn't fully lose track because the Jerusalem Talmud says we're still counting on some level the the jubilee so we have track of the Shemitah so as long as we know the jub where the jubilee is at so we're counting that so we have we we could we could track things and maybe that's at the core of the of the of the machloket of the argument between the two because at that point in the Jerusalem Talmud was written 200 years earlier we were still in the land of Israel at least Judea and um Benjamin were still on the land um but uh soon after we weren't right when we went to babylon okay. so when we went to babylon things got really went haywire and we got really f confused by what was going on so yeah um and muna so cindy and muna is what we believe and and that's that's almost like that hashem could do anything but that doesn't mean that it me really goes into my core of who I am, whereas Bitachon is like, I believe that God is, it, it can do anything for me. Whereas God could do anything is Emuna. And that could be external. Whereas Bitachon is God not only could do, but he will do. Even when, when we have the positive way of thinking, thinking good, it will be good. And we're able to, to almost like bring that about, bring that, 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 um, result in a sense because because of the proactiveness that we have with bitachon um so the omer is very much rebecca like connected to be to uh to the to the counting of uh of the jubilee cycle exactly you know the idea of 49 and the idea of reaching the 50th is the yovel and 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 in a sense that's the cycle that 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 we uh that we get to but we're going to go more into into the Omer, specifically in reaching the 50th gate next week, because we're about to enter the Shavuot, right? The holiday of Shavuot, which is the 40, which is the, after we do what we could do, the 49, we reach the 50th. So we're going to, God willing, go into that next week, which is um, right, right before Shavuot. And just one more thing we're in the week now of yesod of foundation which is the week of basically the number six is foundation and then we go into seven which is shemitah which also connects to the idea of the six if you will say what we'll do in the six years so according to the so according to um I forgot where i saw this it says that oh the ismach israel yeah, he brings he brings down that that has to do with the Yesod, which we usually read around this time, where we go through the sphere of Yesod, which is foundation, which has which is really the, the sphere which is connected to Bitachon, Yesod, right? Foundation brings us to go into the land. And going into the land is instilling godliness within the land. And Baal Shem Tov says that that's really the whole idea of instilling godliness within the physicality, within the land, within the consciousness of, of our minds, um, which is taking, which is basically bitachon embodied. Yeah, something like that the Baal Shem Tov says in a certain way, yeah, that, that we draw it down into the earth, into ourselves, right, into the land. So... Anyway, so we should uh, we should instill 
uh, be more and more bitachon into our lives on all levels, and we should um, we should be able to have really trust in Hashem in a uh, in an easier way, almost like the Jerusalem Talmud is talking about. But God willing to have it on the level of the jubilee year level where bitachon is illuminated by knowing that Hashem is just like so clearly giving us everything like Reb Zusha sort of was teaching us that we're enveloped in God's light so by meditating on this on the jubilee and and shemitah cycles coming together and deepening that 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 bitachon um we draw it down in a, in, a, in a tangible way. So, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Sally. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Jane. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Abigail. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. Many blessings. Thanks.